In his autobiography, Burgess recounts a meeting he had early in his career with the novelist Graham Greene. Burgess writes, Green made it clear to me that he had achieved much and had reached a plateau where he could afford to take leisurely breath. He had not written the definitive Malayan novel which should match the definitive Vietnamese one entitled The Quiet American. And he did not think that I would write it either. Nevertheless, Burgess was always very polite about Green, and he showed a degree of admiration for Green's fiction in various reviews he's written in the course of his career. But if we move forward in time to 88, we find Burgess being interviewed in the uh, French magazine Lear, the books magazine, Lear. And um, Burgess has this to say. The, the interviewer asks, Is jealousy a widespread sentiment among writers? And Burgess says, I readily believe that, but I'm not concerned, because I'm alone in this statement. When I'm in London, I hardly see Kingsley Amis, who's a friend and whom I admire. He's like me. He's a monster who drank too much and smoked too much. As for my neighbour on the Court d'Azur, Graham Green, who lives in Antibes, he has become very bizarre. He has no friends. He writes letters every day to Kim Philby, the British spy refuged in Moscow. And he spreads himself around in a funny manner on my account in the British newspapers. He pretends that I have attributed imaginary remarks to him by reporting one of our conversations in a book, which is false. That he had to look up my words in a dictionary, which is also false. That I read a lot, but without discrimination. And not very friendly, at all. Why is he like that? He's a convert, whereas I'm a Catholic from birth. All of the difference lies there. In a recent novel, he pretends that only Catholic converts understand the nature of religion, and that they're better theologians than others. He doesn't realize that Catholicism isn't just religion, but a familial culture. What's more, I am half Irish. My grandmother, Mary Ann Finnegan, was totally Irish, just as is my cousin, George Dwyer, Archbishop of Birmingham. In general, in England, the faith is Irish. It's the Irish who've maintained it. This situation displeases the grand writers like Graham Greene. It forces them to pray in the churches with Irish workers or Italian boys. Not very aristocratic, all that. Socially unacceptable. This interview in the, the books magazine triggered Green to write the following letter to Burgess. And it's worth uh, reading it out. It really is. It's quite uh, amusing to, 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 to look at it. The letter goes as follows. My dear Anthony Burgess, I hear you've been attacking me rather severely on apostrophe because of my great age and in Lear because of my correspondence with my friend Kim Philby. I know how difficult it is to avoid inaccuracies when one becomes involved in journalism. 
But as you thought it relevant to attack me because of my age, I don't see the point. You should have checked the facts. I happen to be 83, not 86. I trust you will safely reach that age too. In Lear, you seem to have been quoted as writing that I had been in daily correspondence with Philby before he died. In fact, I received ten letters from him in the course of twenty years. You must be very naïf if you believe our letters were clandestine on either side. Were you misinformed, or have you caught the common disease of journalists, of dramatising at the cost of the truth? Never mind. I admired your three earliest novels, and I remember with pleasure your essay on my work in your collection Urgent Copy. Also your article on me in May in the Sunday Telegraph, and the novel, not one of your best, which you dedicated to me.